What if I told you that right now as you watch this, you could leave Earth in a spaceship, travel in a perfectly straight line forever, and you might never find the edge of the universe? Or maybe you would. Maybe you would slam into some kind of cosmic wall where space and time simply stop existing. Or here is the strangest possibility of all. Maybe you would travel for billions of years only to somehow end up right back where you started looking at Earth again. This is not science. Science fiction. This is perhaps the most mind-bending unsolved problem in all of astrophysics. And by the end of this video, you are going to understand it better than 99% of people on this planet. If this video blew your mind even a little bit, do me a favor and smash that like button right now. It sounds simple, but it genuinely helps this video reach more curious minds like yours, who are fascinated by the mysteries of the universe. But before we can even attempt to answer what is at the edge of the universe, we need to start with a question so simple that you have probably never even thought to ask it. Why is the sky dark at night? Now I know what you are thinking. That is obvious. The sun is not shining on your side of Earth, so you see the darkness of space with a few stars scattered around. But wait, think deeper. If the universe is infinite and filled with stars, and if it has existed forever, then no matter which direction you look, your line of sight should eventually hit a star. Every single point in the night sky should be blazing with light. The entire sky should be as bright as the surface of the sun. No darkness anywhere, just blinding light in every direction. But that is not what we see, is it? We look up and we see darkness sprinkled with tiny points of light. So what does this mean? Does it mean the universe is not infinite? Does it mean there really is an edge out there somewhere? A boundary where the stars just just stop? This puzzle is called Berzer's Paradox, named after a German astronomer, and solving it is going to take us on a journey through the strangest ideas in modern physics. And I promise you, the answer is far more shocking than you expect. Let us go back to the beginning, not the beginning of this video, but the beginning of everything. 13.88 billion years ago, our universe exploded into existence with what we call the hot Big Bang. At that moment, everything was unimaginably hot, unbelievably dense, and expanding at a ferocious rate. And here, here is the key. That expansion never stopped. It is still happening right now. Space itself is stretching, growing larger, every single second. Now, when astronomers point their telescopes at distant galaxies, they notice something bizarre. The further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away from us. And if you push this idea to its extreme, you arrive at something truly strange. What if there are galaxies so incredibly far away that they are moving away from us faster than the speed of light. I know what you are thinking. Wait, nothing can travel faster than light. You are absolutely right. Nothing can move through space faster than light. But here is the twist that bends most people's brains. Space itself can expand however fast it wants. The rules do not apply to space itself. And because of this, there is a boundary around us, a sphere beyond which everything is racing away from us faster than light can travel. This boundary has a name. It is called the Hubble Sphere, and right now it sits about 14.4 billion light years away from us in every direction. Light emitted by anything beyond this sphere will never reach us. It is like running on a treadmill that is moving faster than you can run. No matter how fast you go, you fall behind. But here is where it gets even more incredible. And I need you to pay close attention because this is the part most people get wrong. The Hubble sphere is not static. It is growing every single day. It expands A a little bit more. And because of this growth, light that was emitted billions of years ago by galaxies that were outside the Hubble sphere can actually reach us today. The sphere grew large enough to capture that ancient light, and after traveling for billions of years, finally arrives at Earth. We can actually see galaxies that are currently moving away from us faster than light. Let that sink in for a moment. This creates what we call the observable universe. It is everything we can possibly see, everything that has ever had a chance to send light in our direction, and it is 93 billion light years wide. Now, you might be wondering, wait, 
if the universe is only 13.8 billion years old, how can we see something 93 billion light years away? The answer is expansion. Space has been stretching this entire time, carrying that light along with it. So now we can finally solve paradox. Why is the night sky dark? Because as galaxies move away from us, the light they emit gets stretched. It shifts toward the red end of the spectrum. The faster they move, the more stretched the light becomes. Eventually, it stretches so much that it becomes infrared light, which our human eyes cannot see. The universe is glowing with light from distant galaxies, but it is invisible to us. So, the darkness of night is actually hiding a symphony of ancient light that we cannot perceive. And But here is the thing. The observable universe is not the edge of everything. Far from it. There is almost certainly much more universe beyond what we can see. The question is, what shape does it take? And this is where things get truly mind-blowing. You might assume the universe is shaped like a giant sphere. I mean, if the Big Bang started at a single point and expanded outward, would it not just form a giant ball? Giant ball. That is what the great philosophers like Aristotle and Plato believed. But our observations tell a different story, and we have Albert Einstein to thank for understanding why. General relativity tells us that space is not just some flat, empty grid. It is a curved fabric. Mass and energy warp this fabric, creating what we experience as gravity. And this same principle applies to the universe as a whole. At the largest scales, space-time itself can be curved in one of three ways. The first option is positive curvature. Imagine the universe shaped like the surface of a sphere, but in higher dimensions in this kind of space. If you sent two beams of light traveling in parallel lines, they would eventually converge and meet just like lines of longitude on a globe meet at the poles. In this universe, if you flew your spaceship in a straight line long enough, you would eventually loop all the way around and end up back where you started. No edge, just an endless loop. The second option is negative curvature. Picture a saddle shape in this geometry. Parallel lines of light would actually diverge, spreading further and further apart forever. The universe would extend outward infinitely, never repeating, never ending. The third option is that space-time is perfectly flat. No positive curve, no negative curve, just flat. In this case, parallel lines stay parallel forever. They never meet. They never spread apart. They just go on and on into infinity. So which is it? How do we figure out the shape of our universe? Cosmologists have an incredibly clever method. They use triangles. In positively curved space, the angles of a triangle add up to more than 180 degrees. In negatively curved space, they add up to less than 180 degrees. In flat space, they add up to exactly 180 degrees. By measuring the patterns in the cosmic microwave background, which is essentially a snapshot of light left over from the Big Bang, scientists can measure these angles for our universe. And the results are in. Our universe appears to be flat, perfectly, precisely flat. Now you have made it through the difficult part. You understand that space-time appears flat at the largest scales we can measure. But what does this actually tell us about the true shape and size of everything? Here is one possibility. What if our observable universe is just a tiny, tiny patch on a much larger curved surface? Think about standing on Earth. When you look around, it appears flat, right? It, but we know Earth is actually a sphere. We are just too small to perceive the curvature. Maybe the same thing is happening with the universe. Maybe the observable universe is such a small fraction of the total universe that we cannot detect the curvature. If this is true, the total universe would have to be at least 1,000 times larger than what we can observe. But most cosmologists today believe something even more dramatic. They believe the universe is truly infinite. Not just very large, literally infinite, stretching forever in in all directions, with no end, no edge, no boundary, just space and galaxies and stars going on forever. And this is where things get genuinely terrifying. If the universe is truly infinite, then mathematically everything must repeat. Think about it. Everything you see around you, in including yourself, is made of a finite number of particles 
arranged in a finite number of ways. If you have infinite space filled with the same ingredients following the same laws of physics, statistics demands that eventually, somewhere out there, the same arrangement will occur again. And there could be another Earth out there, another version of you. In fact, there could be infinite versions of you, some ident with slight variation. Maybe there is a version of you watching this exact video right now, but in that universe, you decide not to subscribe. While in this universe, of course, you are going to subscribe, right? I know this sounds like pure science fiction. It probably does not sit right with you intuitively. But this is what the mathematics of an infinite universe actually predicts. The exact copy of you would exist in a galaxy roughly 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 29 meters away. That is a 10 followed by 100 billion trillion zeros. It is a number so large it might as well be infinity, but in a truly infinite universe you could theoretically reach it, except you cannot. And this brings us to perhaps the most haunting realization of all. Remember the Hubble Sphere? That boundary where everything beyond it is racing away faster than light. Even if you built a spaceship that traveled at 99.99% the speed of light, you could never catch up to anything beyond that boundary. They are moving away too fast. The cosmic speed limit has imprisoned us. Right now, 94% of all the galaxies we can see in our observable universe are already beyond the Hubble sphere. We can see their ancient light, but we can never visit them. We can never communicate with them. We can never meet any aliens that might live there. They are forever out of reach, and it gets worse. Every single second, more and more stars cross over this cosmic horizon, becoming permanently unreachable. 60,000 stars per second. Since you started watching this video, more than 50 million stars have slipped beyond the point of no return. 50 million stars that humanity can never reach. No matter what technology we develop, no matter how many billions of years we survive, 100 billion years from now, every single galaxy except our own local group will be too far away to ever reach. And 2 trillion years from now, they will be so distant that we will not even be able to see them anymore. The beautiful cosmic web of galaxies, the nebulae, the distant clusters, all of it will fade from view beyond an event horizon as if being swallowed by a cosmic black hole. No matter how powerful a telescope future humans build, they will point it in every direction and find only silence and darkness. Imagine humans evolving on a planet two trillion years from now. They would look up at the sky and see only their home galaxy surrounded by infinite emptiness. They would have no way of knowing that billions of galaxies once filled the cosmos. They would never discover the Big Bang. They would never understand cosmic evolution. They would probably believe the universe is static and eternal, just their lonely galaxy floating in an endless void. And they would have no way to learn otherwise. Kenny, now I know this sounds depressing, but here is how I think about it. Our galaxy alone contains hundreds of billions of stars. We have not even figured out how to leave our own solar system yet. The nearest star is over four light years away and we have no idea how to get there. We have plenty of room to grow, plenty of mysteries to solve, plenty of wonders to discover right here in our cosmic neighborhood. And here is the most beautiful part. You right now in this moment understand the true scale shape, and fate of the universe better than any astronomer who lived just 100 years ago. The greatest minds of the early 20th century did not know any of this. You now possess knowledge that Einstein himself did not have access to. That is remarkable. So what have we learned? We live in an infinite flat universe that is expanding faster and faster. There's no edge, no wall, no barrier where space ends. Just endless cosmos stretching in every direction forever. Other versions of you probably exist out there somewhere in the mathematical infinity of space, but the expansion of the universe has locked us into this tiny accessible bubble. Most of the observable universe is already beyond our reach, and every second more of it slips away forever. But do not get too comfortable with this picture. Humanity will continue exploring, continue discovering, continue pushing the boundaries 
boundaries of what we know. 50 years from now, cosmologists might look back at everything I just told you and shake their heads at how little we truly understood. That is the beauty of science. Every answer opens new questions. Every discovery reveals deeper mysteries. Pray now. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to us. And yet somehow against all odds, we have managed to figure out quite a lot about this strange cosmic home of ours. We are specks of dust on a tiny planet orbiting an ordinary star in one galaxy among trillions. And we have decoded the shape of infinity itself. If that does not fill you with wonder, I do not know what will. Click on the next video and come along as we dive into even more astonishing mysteries from the farthest reaches of